What's up guys, it's Alex the Magician here, back for another Heroes 3 tier list video. And in this one, I wanted to rank towns in terms of how easy or difficult they are to pick up and learn how to play for newer players, for somebody who's just starting out, uh, you know, learning how to play online. You know, I've been asked this question quite a few times on stream, you know, people ask either what town do I think is the easiest or the hardest to learn how to play, or they just ask what town should they start learning to learn the fastest. So I decided to make this video to, you know, hopefully settle some of those questions and let you guys know what I feel like are the easiest and hardest towns to actually learn how to play in, which ones you should be trying out first and which ones you probably shouldn't. So this is of course going to be my opinion and it is gonna be based on my own experience with these towns. So I'm gonna be ranking them based on how difficult or easy they were for me to learn how to play. So I would actually also like to hear from you guys whether you agree or disagree and why. You know, I'm curious to hear whether your experience was similar or different from mine. Maybe you guys feel like some of these towns are easier or more difficult than what I feel they are. But without further ado, let's just get into this. And, you know, I'm going to go from the bottom up. So the most difficult towns to learn how to play. And I'm going to discuss my reasoning for ranking them where I do. Okay, so at the very bottom, the hardest town to learn how to play, in my opinion, is Cove. And Cove has a lot of things going against it, and the biggest thing is the terrain penalty, right? The swamp terrain is the worst terrain in the game, 175% penalty, so 175 movement points for one horizontal move on the swamp terrain as opposed to 100 moves on dirt or grass, right? So that I feel like is the biggest disadvantage and for newer players especially, it's difficult to learn how to kind of play around that, uh, play around the terrain penalty. So I would certainly not recommend this town to newer players, but to add to that, Cove is not good at farming hives. So with Fortress, for example, you also are on Swamp, but you are pretty good at farming hives and you can just snowball your wyvern and it's more or less straightforward and you don't incur the movement penalty because the wyvern are native swamp units. With Cove, you're good at farming pickets and you're pretty good at farming consas but you really don't want to be dragging Cyclopes or Angels through the swamp. And if they're far into the swamp, it's going to take you forever to try to farm them and chain them out. So for that reason, you know, it's just kind of really challenging to work around that. And with hives, you're just not good at farming them. So to add on top of the kind of terrain penalty disadvantage already, your day one power stack, usually you start with Cassiopeia, the Oceanid or Nymph power stack, it's very, very squishy. So it is fast and they hit hard. So if you kind of micro properly, you can keep them safe, but you really don't wanna take any hits on them. So, and for that reason, you really can't take hives with them because when you try to take hives, that power stack melts away really, really quickly. And on top of that, it's also not great to take the tier seven dwelling with Cove because the sea serpents are gonna match speed with your oceanids. So you're likely gonna be losing somewhere around 20, 30 oceanids when you take that in the best case scenario. So it may not even be worth it to lose that much of your oceanid power stack for just just one sea serpent. So you may just opt to not go for it. So usually you try to go for Nyx uh, dwellings or maybe building Nyx in your town and then with that try to go for hives or if you have consoles or pickets near the road then you try to go for those. But once again farming anything off-road when your main power stack is Cyclops or Angels is going to be challenging. So kind of playing around that terrain penalty 
is what makes Cove challenging, and especially for newer players, I would certainly not recommend trying to learn Cove when you know that's your first town or you don't really know how to play online. So for those reasons, I have Cove as my most difficult town to learn how to play for newer players. All right, so next I am gonna rank Stronghold. So Stronghold is not the weakest town. And, you know, once again, this list is not on how strong or weak the towns themselves are. It is based on how difficult the towns are to learn for newer players, right? And what makes Stronghold difficult, you do have a little bit of terrain penalty, but it's not that bad. It's only 25%. It's the smallest penalty out of all the terrains that do have penalty. But what makes Stronghold difficult is the fact is that your units are really squishy, especially your day one power stack, whether that's Wolf Raiders or Goblins. Sometimes people start with Gretchen. They hit pretty hard, but they cannot tank. So once again, that makes taking Hives difficult. Uh, taking pickets challenging as well because if you take any hits if the wolf raiders and pickets end up moraling You can definitely lose a lot of your power stack and just in general taking fights in the early game It's a little bit challenging because you really have to learn how to kite properly You really have to learn how to not take any hits on your power stack and take retaliation and You know only hit whatever you already took retaliation from with one stacks so that is not something that newer players can pick up just right off the bat like that. So I feel like it's a little bit too challenging uh, for newer players to pick up Stronghold just because you really have to be careful with your power stacks. And even when you get Behemoths, they are also kind of squishy. Uh, so, you know, you really need to be careful with those as well. So main reason for the difficulty of Stronghold, the ranking of Stronghold is the squishiness of the early game units and the necessity to really micro learn how to micro well in fights, which newer players uh, cannot necessarily do. And honestly, both, both of these towns, I am not that great with Cove and Stronghold. They're probably uh, two of my worst towns. Well, maybe not Cove, but Stronghold. I definitely think that's my worst town uh, and yeah the reasons that I've described above uh, are definitely part of it all right the next one in and the last one in the D tier you guys may be surprised by this one and this may actually stir up some controversy I've certainly had some controversy about this on my stream before but it is actually gonna be Necro and once again, it's not because Necro is weak. Necro is the strongest town. But I feel like, and it's been my personal experience, that Necro was actually challenging to learn how to play well. Um, with Necro, the problem is, is that you really have to keep a lot of things in mind to play it well. So, you know, I learned Necro as my third town. So I first learned Dungeon, then I learned Conflux, and then I learned Necro. And when I learned Conflux, I learned Luna, Conflux with Luna, and I felt like that was going to be the most difficult thing to learn. And it certainly was challenging, but after that, I moved on to Necro, and Necro was actually even more challenging for me to learn, and it took me longer to learn how to play well, um, longer than Conflux. And the reason is because you have to kind of consider a lot of things and learn a lot of things and know how to do a lot of things right. So most of the time, you your standard strategy is going to be snowballing your skeletons, right? Uh, what that means is that in many cases, you may actually avoid going for creature banks like hives, for example. In many cases, you avoid hives as necro because skeletons with animate are going to be more reliable than a wyvern power stack. And if you go for hives, you will be bleeding away your skeletons, which you really don't want to do. In a lot of cases, you may not go for pickets either with necro. So. 
what your standard strategy will be, what you should definitely learn how to do with Necro first, is to play with the skeletons and animate dead, right? In many cases, that's gonna be your most reliable go-to strategy, which will allow you to break on one-to-one -one in probably like 90% of games if you uh, execute it properly. But to be able to execute it properly, there's a lot of elements that have to come together. So you have to go for side towns, which you know necro is the town that really wants to go for side towns more more so than any other town because you want the additional units to transform into skeletons both week one and week two then you also want to snowball your skeleton stack which means trying to conserve it as much as possible you know not bleeding it away in fights which means that you have to know how to do fights properly and um, you also need to go for animate dead, which means gathering resources and sometimes resources to not only build uh, Mage Guild level three, but also to re-roll it uh, maybe even several times. So that can be challenging as well. And you also need to get spell power and knowledge because without a decent amount of spell power and knowledge, your animate is not gonna be that useful. So. All of those elements, keeping all of that in mind is definitely challenging, especially when you're just first trying to learn how to play online. So for those reasons, I feel like Necro is actually one of the more challenging towns to learn how to play. And on top of all of that, when you're playing Necro, since it's the strongest town, you're gonna be paying a lot to be Necro. So in the early game, you're also gonna ha have a problem with gold. So you're gonna need to learn how to farm uh, crypts properly and dwarven treasuries and imp caches, things like that in the early game and you know try to overcome that early game gold disadvantage as well. So on top of everything that I've mentioned in terms of you know snowballing skeletons and getting animate and spell power, you also need to figure out the economy with the gold on turn one and you know turn one, two, and three. So all of those reasons are why I feel like Necro is one of the more challenging towns for newer players to learn how to play. Let me know what you guys think about this one because uh, I'm sure a lot of people may disagree with me, but that was my personal experience. Honestly, I feel like Necro is not easy to learn how to play. When you do learn how to play it, it's certainly strong. It's certainly a really strong town, but getting to that point is not that easy. Okay, next I am going to rank Conflux. So when we're talking about Conflux or when I'm ranking Conflux here, I am talking specifically about Conflux with Luna. So I mean the difficulty of learning how to play Luna and, uh, you know, her firewall mechanic, right? Because really, you know, there are other viable options. Some people like playing with Grindon, but I feel like Luna is what gives Conflux the biggest advantage. So if you're going to be paying a lot of gold to start as Conflux, you're, you might as well pick Luna because she can just give you insane tempo in terms of farming the map, even if you don't end up maining her. But at the same time, it is challenging to learn how to use her firewall properly. When I first started learning Conflux, I died constantly. And the first couple of days, I started getting really discouraged, actually, because I was just constantly dying. But then, you know, I started getting better slowly, uh, you know, kind of day by day. And uh, eventually, you know, I got good at uh, learning how to play or, you know, I got good at playing Luna. And once you get to that point, you, it's really fun, you know, like to me playing Luna is probably the most fun uh, that I have when I'm playing Heroes 3 just because, you know, you really feel like you're breaking the game with that firewall mechanic. I mean, just recently I did a 1-1-1 break with Luna uh, video. I mean, nobody else can do that right now. So, uh, I mean, no other hero can do that. So, but yeah, but when you are learning how to play with her, there's a lot of things that you're going to need to learn. Like you can't protect ranged units with a firewall, that two hex units don't move for the firewall if it's a closed wall. Uh, you know, morale can screw you. You need to calculate the damage properly, etc. So there's lots of things that can mess you, mess you up. And you are certainly going to be suiciding a lot when you first start playing Luna. So 
And on top of all of that, you are also likely going to be starting at a gold disadvantage. So at the same time, you will need to uh, farm ruins or find a decent amount of gold in the early game. And it's going to be more difficult than with Necro, because with Necro, your skeleton power stack is going to be pretty reliable to farm crypts and things like that. With Conflux, uh, your early game army is not that great. So farming things like, for example, Dwarven Treasuries is not that easy with Conflux. So for all of those reasons, I have Conflux in C tier. All right, uh, next I'm going to rank Tower. So Tower is relatively straightforward now as they've added the lamps, but one of the biggest problems with Tower is once again the terrain penalty, right? So you have 50% penalty, not as bad as Swamp, but still pretty bad. And what that means is that you are usually not going to be wanting to farm hives, pickets, and consas if they're far into the snow, right? So usually as tower, what you want to do is you want to try to farm lamps, right? You want to find lamps and you want to try to snowball those genies and then try to find a break that is uh, going to be doable with genies buffing themselves. Or maybe you want to go for some other creature banks and buff like a Cyclop power stack or a Wyvern power stack by genies. But once again, you'll be limited uh, to what's close to the road usually because the, f the farther you have to go into the, s the snow and chain out things like angels and cyclopes without pathfinding and without like pathfinding boots or wings, you know, it's just going to take you longer. So kind of um, for that reason, I have it in the middle of this tier list while it's somewhat straightforward. At the same time, you are dealing with that terrain penalty, which is not that easy for newer players to deal with. Um, and, you know, for in a lot of games, what that's going to mean is that you're going to be ignoring things like hives and pickets and consas and just trying to farm genies, maybe experimental shops or, you know, cloud temples for giants to try to get a giant power stack. But, um, Usually, you know, you will not have that many hives or pickets or consas really right next to the road. So it's kind of unfortunate, you know, like when I take a look at a tower biome and I find a bunch of hives, but they're in the, in the snow, you know, any other town, like let's say dungeon, I would be super happy with because I wouldn't be suffering that terrain penalty. But with tower, I'm like, yeah, those hives pretty much don't exist. So you kind of also have to learn that you have to learn that you know, the situations when it's not optimal to farm uh, hives, pickets, and consas because you're just going to be wasting too much time in the snow and playing around that is challenging. So for all of those reasons, I have tower here in mid-tier. Okay, now we're getting into the easier towns to learn how to play. And the next tier, I'm going to talk about all of the towns there at once. So this is going to be Inferno, Rampart, and Castle. And all of these are an A tier. And, you know, Inferno might be surprising to you guys <clears throat> because it's certainly a weaker town. But again, this is not a list of how strong the towns are, it's how easy or difficult they are to learn how to play. Now, it is not easy to win with Inferno uh, because it is a weaker town, but the gameplay itself is relatively straightforward. And all of these towns are really kind of similar. Usually you rely on an early game ranged power stack, which is Magogs for Inferno, Grand Elves for Rampart, and Marksmen for Castle. And, you know, it's the similar, it's a similar mechanic where with ranged units, you know, even a brain dead person can tell you that, hey, you got to keep your ranged units safe, right? It's not like trying to micro with stronghold. It is, you know, it's pretty self-explanatory that you really just want to do as much un unanswered damage to your enemies as possible and keep them away from your ranged stack. And if they close the gap somehow, then you're kind of screwed. So for all of these, uh, it's similar. You know, you want to try to take early game fights against things that you can kind of try to kite around, try to do, uh, you know, shoot down without taking any hits, you know, avoid ranged guards and avoid things that are like really fast and flying and that can close the gap. 
At the same time, none of these towns are that great at farming hives or pickets, uh, hives especially. And, you know, pickets you can kind of do. Rampart is the best at that because Grand Elves do and uh, Centaur Captains do outspeed Wolf Raiders. But if they morale on you and go into your Grand Elf stack, well, you're kind of screwed. Um, with Inferno and Castle, if you're going with Magogs, you, you know, match speed with the Wolf Raiders, which does make it doable in certain cases, but in most cases you want to wait for Efreet or maybe Devils or something like that. And with Castle, you also match speed with Speed 8 uh, with Marksman, but again, you want to wait for something like Angels, maybe Cavaliers. So what I'm getting at here is another similarity between these is the fact that uh, these really rely on dwellings in a lot of cases. So Inferno more so than the other two, you really, really want to find the free dwellings or devil dwellings as Inferno. Or, you know, if you don't get any of those, then you at least build a free in your town. Uh, and then with that, maybe you can try to take pickets with haste or, uh, you know, build maybe also pit, pit fiends and demons and try to take hives with that. Uh, with Rampart, also, you want to try to take Unicorn Dwellings, maybe Dragon Dwellings, and then with that, try to go for Pickets and Hives, Castle, Portals of Glory, or maybe Cavaliers also, and, you know, with that, try to go for Hives. So, really similar, really straightforward gameplay, and that is why I have these in A tier, because it's really straightforward, right? You want to protect your ranged power stacks, and you want to go for Dwellings, and then after that, you want to go for the Creature Banks, right? Or if you don't get any Dwellings, as well, you want to try to somehow get enough meat to go into those uh, creature banks to try to snowball that. So for those reasons, I have all of these uh, towns in A tier. So I would say that somewhat easy to pick up and some people actually suggest that something like Castle and Rampart would be should be the first town that you should uh, you know start to learn how to play. I think I've actually heard Hellite say that that he was like, yeah, you know, if you're new to the game, just pick one of those where you have archers and then you can just shoot down whatever you're fighting without really having to think about how to kite, how to take retaliation, etc. But I personally don't necessarily feel the same way. I don't necessarily feel like that's the easiest town to pick up. But, you know, if that's your jam, if you like those units, if, you know, you feel safe by, you know, trying to shoot something down from a distance, yeah, sure. I can see people picking up Castle or Rampart as their kind of first town that they learn how to play. All right, and the top tier... The next two easiest town to learn how to play is actually going to be Fortress, in my opinion. And this, again, may be a little bit surprising, right? Because I have Cove at the very bottom, and it's the same terrain penalty, right? And I mentioned that that is the biggest reason why I rank Cove at the very bottom, because it's challenging to deal with the terrain. So uh, Fortress has to deal with the same terrain, and it is true that is challenging. That's why I don't have it as the number one. However, I've mentioned already that it is easy to farm hives as Fortress. Um, Fortress can take a size 3 hive with its day 1 army, provided it doesn't lose a lot to the actual guard of the hive. So what that usually means is that you just want to find hives and snowball them. So the reason why I have Fortress here is just because it is really straightforward. And usually your standard gameplay with Fortress, find hives, farm hives, break with Wyvern. Maybe upgrade your Wyvern to Wyvern Monarchs. That's it. So for that reason, I rank it as one of the easiest towns to pick up and learn how to play because it is straightforward. You get good heroes, they're going to be tanky, Beastmasters are good, they're, they're going to have good... A uh, good chance of rolling earth magic. You also have serpent flies, which make your scouts fast. That's a decent advantage to have. And in a lot of cases, you're just ignoring pickets and consoles and experimental shops, uh, you know, because in many cases, they will not be close to the road. And really, you just want the hives. Now, if you do find pickets next to the road, they'll be easy to farm with wyvern as well. And, you know, consoles will be relatively easy to farm with wyvern because you'll have beast 
Beastmaster so will be pretty tanky and you won't be losing too much. But as I've mentioned, the most straightforward, the most reliable strategy for Fortress is just going for Hive. So the reason I have it here is just, I feel like that's a super straightforward thing and you know, it doesn't take a lot of learning how to like avoid getting your archers hit or you know, you do have to kind of know how to take fights, but when you go into Hives, you can really even do those on auto combat in a lot of cases. So I feel like it's a very straightforward straightforward town you know pretty much one plan <laughs> and you know you just continue you just like restart the map until you see hives and you know if you don't see hives then you just cry and gg out <laughs> so uh yeah for those reasons i feel like fortress is one of the easier towns to learn how to play i would certainly recommend it to a newer player Dealing with a terrain penalty can be challenging, but eventually you can kind of, well, you can ignore that by just farming hives and eventually you can start to learn how to deal with it, which usually means avoiding, you know, uh, dragging something that's a non-native swamp unit into the swamp. All right, and the top tier, the easiest town to learn how to play is dungeon i feel like so as far as dungeon goes it pretty much has everything that fortress has going for it without the disadvantages right so you are also able to farm a size three hive on day one on top of that you can also farm um Consus and Fortress can do that as well fortress can farm a size one cons on day one and so can dungeon and, you know, you can do a size one experimental shop on day one, size one red tower, and you are not going to be suffering any of the terrain penalty with any of those units. So it's really versatile, right? You can go for any of those things. And it is also pretty straightforward. In a lot of cases, you are looking for either dragon dwellings or hives that you can farm really quickly and get that crazy tempo, you know? So usually you look for that on day one, you know, try to take the dragon cave or the hive on day one and you know if that doesn't work out for you then you take a restart and you know if you can't do that then you can go dragon caves into pickets maybe into consoles so it's really versatile you have a lot of opportunities your day one power stack is really good uh you know you have good heroes and uh you know and you don't really need to worry too much about uh you know something like getting uh like uh you know dealing with a crazy firewall mechanic for uh luna for example or avoiding the terrain like for tower or for fortress or you know the range power stacks for castle and rampart like trying to protect those you know with dungeon a lot of fights can even be done on auto com combat you do have to learn how to fight and what fights to take and what fights to avoid usually that means not taking fights uh, that are, you know, too fast and have nasty abilities. So usually you want to uh, fight things that you can outspeed or at least match the speed with your troglodytes. But I would say it is the more forgiving out of all of the towns in terms of making mistakes. And, you know, I just think that it is a town that I picked up. It's probably my second favorite town next to Conflux. And, you know, if I'm just not considering Luna, then it would be my first favorite town. I remember playing as a kid the Armageddon's Blade campaign. So when I first started playing PvP, I just started with Dungeon and I constantly played that and it helped me learn the town. It also helped me learn Jebus Cross and just the PvP kind of uh, scene. And uh, yeah, I feel like I would definitely recommend this to newer players. Of course, you know, if you like it, like what I usually say to newer players is pick a town that you like, you know, because if you like something, you're going to want to learn it and it's not going to feel like learning. It's kind of a trick to learning anything is to not feel like you're actually forcing yourself to learn, but actually, you know, do something that seems fun to you so that you actually enjoy it and you don't even notice how your brain retains information and how you improve at something so for me that was dungeon uh, of course if you don't like dungeon you can try something else but yeah i certainly think that is it is the easiest town to pick up for newer players for all of the reasons i've mentioned above 
All right, guys. Well, that is it for this tier list. Uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and found this informative. Thank you guys so much for watching and feel free to check out my Twitch stream link in the description below and I will see you guys soon. Peace out.